so let us kind of move on okay, to the uh, to this uh, course. So, the, so, the idea is that right I mean we will uh, the way right the way the way we kind of we will actually work this thing through is to sort of right initially give you a flavor for what kind of problems right are we sort of intending to handle. Okay. So, it is a very you know very sort of big area okay. if you look at uh, computer vision per se it is a very it is a very large you know sort of wide expanse. Okay. We cannot do of course right all of it, but I think you know all the things that you would need right in order to be able to tomorrow read a paper and write and even right, do something that can even hopefully lead you to write a paper right uh, you know, down the line. So, and also right uh, you should be able to appreciate as to what this area has entails and so on. So, all that should happen. Okay. Uh, now, the goal right. So, for example, I mean if you kind of look at an image right if you store an image and if you open it right it is it's just it is numbers. Right? For example, on the right hand side right what you see are just numbers right, but then we do not we as human beings right we do not look at numbers right. When I see you I do not see you I see you as a bunch of numbers right. So, the idea is that on the left is where all the information is right, but then when you give it to an algorithm an algorithm sees these numbers right. So, the idea is that how do you actually how do you actually bridge this gap the way the human vision system works is very evolved I mean right? nobody in fact the other day right there was a, there was an expert right that had come to give a talk I mean he works on face recognition per se <coughs> and it was asking him right I mean do we have a better understanding of how visual representation uh, happens inside the humans and even today right there is very little information about how how we how we actually how we actually represent right represent in the sense that uh, you know what are those features that we capture when I identify somebody right today for example and then tomorrow when I recognize him we do not even know what is it that is stored about that person and what is that minimal information right that I store in order to be able to recognize him under different conditions illumination pose variations right. So, so but of course you know, we accumulate a lot of things right I mean it is not just uh, just let us say right the face per se right it is also about the context I mean. So, if I see it in 301 then I sort of associate him with one of my class students. So, all that happens right. So, it is a very complex thing and and you know we tend to uh, we tend to you know sort of accumulate and you know use all this kind of contextual information in addition to direct information. So, right giving you know endowing an algorithm right a vision algorithm with all of that is not easy. So, so, what we typically do is we kind of break it down right we break down the problem into right different things like for example, if it is a depth estimation right then we have a bunch of algorithms just for that right if I have to know who is where in this classroom not in the terms of uh, who it is, but in terms of uh, right is there somebody in the front is there somebody in the back that itself requires a bunch of bunch of algorithms right and on, on top of that right if I have to have an understanding about you know what is going on in this class that becomes even higher right. So, the idea is that uh, right what we see is really on the left, but then what we really feed to an algorithm is what is on the right right a computer as it as, as actually right as is as uh, you know as put here what a computer sees is this, but eventually right we want a computer to see the see the image as a whole right and uh, that that whole thing is what is what is kind of split up into the, if you look at the course content right it says a low level vision uh, then there is a geometry right coming after that then there is a mid level vision then there is a high level vision right. Now, uh, so the so the way the so the so the way the you know the way right you can actually think about it is at a low level vision right you do certain very very low level tasks tasks and then geometry right is more about knowing where what is and then you go to the mid level where you probably integrate some of those features to make some other some a little bit of a higher assessment and then you go to a high level right where you really do an understanding of the scene and so on like we do for example right. But uh, we are fortunate right not just us right all the all the right little things around that that see and perceive and you know understand the environment I mean that way it is still very far away. But the, but the, but the right good thing is that a lot has happened in the last 10 to 15 years right before that it was still you know many of the things right that we are going to be talking about were still kind of very um, I would say you know kind of were still. Mm, they were kind of you know they were being looked at as you know sort of goals that might happen much later, but uh, fortunately right many things happened in the last 15 years that is why vision as an area has kind of right uh, you know, has uh, gained a lot of uh, you know, what do you call you know, a lot of uh, a lot of attention right. Okay. Now, what kind of information right can one actually extract from an image right? there are kind of two types I mean you can again classify it in say different ways, but uh, simply put right you can kind of look at it one is metric and then another is semantic. Right, semantic uh, I think you all understand it semantics means something associated with words and sentences and so on. Metric is like you know a measurement right metric is like a measurement information. So, you can sort of roughly divide right when you see an image and if you want to give it to an algorithm 
you can either look at it uh, broadly right you can look at the algorithm as being able to g gather semantic information or it could be a metric information or sometimes it could also be both but usually it's like this or that but sometimes it can also be both sometimes you need the metric information in order to be able to you know make some make certain as other assessments and so on but for the time being right let's just keep them separate let's say right you might need semantic information uh, right the in which case you may you know that will involve a bunch of tasks metric information will then involve a bunch of tasks so okay right vision is a source of semantic information right so if i if i just move right one step forward now what you see here is that right there is a labeling that's happening right and uh, and uh, a building right there's a label for the building so if you look at it right it's kind of looking at different objects in the scene and it is doing doing a categorization it's telling it's telling that something is a flag right something and then there is a sky there's a bus and so on right now uh, right this is one kind of semantic information where you're doing an object labeling right you're really labeling right uh, you know various different objects okay in a scene and and we are right now we're not worried about whether we are do going to do it in a kind of traditional way or whether it is you know deep learning based but all of this is typically kind of right deep learning based okay. all these results the kind of results that we are able to get today are all you know are kind of you know motivated by a deep learning approaches okay because the traditional approaches uh, have many shortfalls but then they are the ones that we really that we also have to understand which is why this course is called modern even though we call it modern computer computer vision it's not just about all kind of modern modern methods okay okay right so there are still about four to five people right so if you if you see right and how many of you have taken a deep learning course or imaging okay right so so yeah so there is still so people so the idea is that right if you look at uh, deep learning for imaging right it will look like you can do a lot of things just by using a network but if you really go back and do the do the formal course on image signal processing right you will realize that there are still so many fundamental things right that uh, that i mean if you knew about them right it would be a big advantage right if you knew the way the way an image is formed the way right images are processed in a traditional way it kind of gives you a strong foothold right and that is also the reason why this particular course has also that kind of so we walk the path where where we sort of uh, you know tell you uh, what would be the what was the model what was the you know traditional way of approaching the problem and some of those are still relevant it's not like they're gone okay and uh, what we call this uh, you know physics injected deep learning or physics inspired right deep learning so that is more of uh, you know things where you can actually use traditional ideas to your advantage so that not i mean everything needs to be learnt right anyway some of these things will become more clear right, as we go on and uh, and you know yeah maybe even if it is a little unclear right now some things that i say it's okay that right? you will uh, i think i'm sure most of you understand what i'm saying but even if it is if you're not able to relate something very closely even now don't bother i think you know, as we go along it will become more clear uh, then uh, scene and kind of a context categorization right i mean you know you can even have a categorization where you say is this an indoor scene is this a city or are you in a village or you know is there a traffic on the road so again right what kind of categorization you want to do is entirely up to you right and uh, a measurement problem right like i said metric information right uh, there what you are more into again right these are these are the most uh, sort of you know the common examples uh, where you know where it's like a for sort of example right when you talk about a stereo right stereo as you know right involves involves right you know two, two cameras right you need actually two so it's, so it's like saying that you know i see a, i see an image from one viewpoint and i change my viewpoint and then you know view it from you know another viewpoint and typically right when you talk about stereo strictly speaking right there has to be a certain way in which you should see i mean it's not meant to be arbitrary viewpoints but yeah i mean right a general stereo you can have arbitrary viewpoints and the idea is that uh, just like our eyes right how am i able to able to see that right you know people are in the front and people are in the back and so on right that is because of of what is called the, the parallax the parallax uh, you know that the brain sort of right takes in from the right images so i know that for example right what it means is that what is he with the, the left eye right suppose this boy appears somewhere in the image in my left eye then from the right in the right eye right i mean he will appear somewhere else right in the image now if i know where this boy appears in image 1 and image 2 right then i can do a triangulation and the triangulation will tell me where he is right that's how the the human vision works if you just look at the stereo part of it but uh, one can argue that if i close my eye right one of the eyes i can still make out that is because we have imbibed so much other information that i don't probably need two eyes to always look at things okay that is a different story right but if you just if you just endo a camera with just a single attribute which is just just looks at the image there is no other information coming because as a human 
you have so much more right that i understand for example the moment i close my eye i already know that there are benches here uh, there is a room here right and all that information i'm gathering you know which the algorithm does not have access to right so that's why when we say stereo we mean pure stereo right no other cue will come in whereas i may use a defocus cue i may i'm right i mean you know i use a stereo cue i, I use a context cue i use a shading cue right as a human i use so many cues right when i actually say something so that's the reason why even given a 2d image now we are able to say so many things right we are able to say something is in the front something is in the back all that is because you know we have gathered so much information along the way that uh, that that we can make a proper assessment but not so for a vision algorithm right so like i said right so when you want to do stereo you just have to have to look at the what it takes to do stereo right no other cue is there the only thing is just like right you sit sit inside uh, inside a train right and if the train is moving let's say so imagine that uh, that's a camera right on the train so it's it's, uh, it's taken an image here it's taken an image here and uh, imagine that there is a hill far back and there is a lamp post right next to the train which one do you think will move faster on on your this image so i taken one image here then i move right my train is moving i take another image right which one will move faster the lamp post or the or the let's say hill at the back the lamp post right because because you know that is the one that is actually closer to you and the closer ones will tend to move faster right on the image and that is what gives you a sense for depth so now what you have to do is you have to make use of this information with one image you couldn't have said that but the moment you have taken the other right now you have a relative sort of a movement right something at the back moved a little slowly moved less right whereas the one in the front moved a lot more and that gives you a cue that yes something is in the front and something is in the back now then the math has to come in right as to how you put this thing together but the cue is really that and that's what uh, we also right, most most of uh, most of the most of the living beings right that use a pair of eyes right actually use stereo information now that is that is a metric metric information right because because we are saying that something is in the front something is in the back not just front and back we might be able to tell how far away right something is 6 meters away something is 6.1 meters away and again at right, how closely can you do that depends on a lot of factors right depends on the camera that you are using depends on the separation between the between the between the cameras right which you are using depends upon the overlap right the field of view that is overlapping between the two cameras and so many things right but strictly speaking right that's what that's what that is what we want to do so down right if you see uh, right i mean so, so if you see here uh, okay so for example right so basically this is called, called a stereo pair right I mean, so if i mark here you can see that no okay so right that's a stereo pair and then and then right out comes uh, sort of right a depth map okay which is kind of shown in a shaded right? and uh, and of course you know you can also look at the look at the depth map from this camera or from or from the other camera then you can go one step further right uh, we can talk about structure from motion which is like which is like uh, which is like you know think uh, which is like uh, you know which is like assuming a moving camera right imagine that imagine that you know i see a nice structure right in front of me and i want to get a get a get a nice sort of what do you call a depth map of that so i could take my camera and kind of move around the object right that makes it a much harder problem because in stereo right you can even fix two cameras on a rig what is called a stereo rig and therefore you know that right relatively they won't move at all right so i can actually can actually keep them such that the image plane of this camera of course we will talk about all that right down the line but the but you understand right there is an image plane right on which on which uh, on which all the photons are impinging and you are gathering the image right now that image plane and the image plane of the other camera right i mean you know that you know that i mean you know they they are uh, right they are kind of placed in a particular way i mean which means that mutual rotation is not there they are exactly parallel to each other in the sense that it is just a shifted version that's the pure stereo i mean you don't do like that right i mean you don't get a you don't get a right i mean you you are not supposed to tilt the camera you are supposed to translate the camera not not introduce any other motion but even if you do that you can account for that but uh, that is a different process strictly speaking take one image like this and then move take another I mean, don't do this okay to the extent possible but sometimes right, you may not be able to avoid that for example we had a dwarka right dwarka you all know right this underwater now one of the teams from my lab right went there to to kind of gather underwater videos and there we had actually made a stereo rig right so this is a gopro camera pair of gopro cameras that we had uh, you know fixed on a bar right so we had screwed it all and it was supposed to be very you know so what do you call it, tightly held in place right both the cameras so that they don't move uh, but what happened is right when when uh, when the diver went inside right with the rig in order to capture the videos uh when I mean the water right you know inside not like not like you know not like there's a big wave or something but that is enough right when you go down that when you capture 
things, right? Now, there was a small little shake which is unavoidable and then we found that, you know, you had to do additional things in order to be able to bring them back to the original configuration that you wish. And that is all have to, that all has to be done as a sort of, sort of a post processing. Ideally, when you capture itself, if they come out the right way, life is easy. If they do not, right, you cannot go and capture them again, right. Many, many a time that happens, right, you cannot repeat an experiment uh, because going down is not an easy thing, right. Somebody has to dive down and do all the imaging and so on and therefore, right, you, there is a process called a rectification. So, that uh, rectification is, is what will then bring them back to this kind of a, to the original pair that you really want. Now, structure from motion is not like that, right. So, you can take an image and then you keep moving, right. You go somewhere else, you take go somewhere else, go somewhere else. And then the idea is that you can even build what is called, what is called a point cloud. Point, see, it is a depth map, right, when you say it is from, from a particular viewpoint, right. That is when we, when you say depth map, right, it means a viewpoint from the viewpoint what is where. But then when you say it is a point cloud, right, what it actually means is that kind of, you know, 3D, think of a, think of a 3D model, right. A 3D model, okay, with respect to some kind of a world coordinate system, where where you know I could be here, I could be there, and then you know from 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 each place I may see a depth map, but then overall it's still a 3D model, right? So the 3D model. Now, if I ask right, what is this a depth map as seen viewed from camera one? You might be able to tell what is that depth map. I might say what is the depth map when you're looking at from let's say camera n. You might be able to tell what is that, right? But then overall you still have what is called a 3D model, right? What's called a point cloud, and then you can map a texture onto it, so that right it looks for example, uh, for example right, I mean if you see here right, um, I mean uh, see for example right, right down here this is a model building, I mean if you impose a texture on it right, then you can then you can see it in the form that you would like to see a building, otherwise it can still be a point cloud and you can still visualize it, but then you will not get the real building feel right, you have to map your texture onto it. And these are fairly involved algorithms okay, and these have been around for a long time very rich area structure from motion. And it is called structure from motion because and here right there are actually, actually two problems that you have to solve. One is like I said right the, I mean, the information about what is the what is the object in front of you. And the second is where are you right, where is the camera okay. So, so you see you have to solve for actually both I mean that is one and, uh, and there are certain ambiguities that then enter because this is uh, I mean right those are all those are all very sort of you know what do you call those are the those are the elegant things right in all of this I mean we will show later what ambiguities can come in it is not like they are all the same okay stereo is a kind of a simpler problem then the moment you kind of expand the scope of it and say that hey look right I want to do structure from motion then it becomes a little more complex and so on right and sometimes right people even try to do something like you know internet based photo collections I do not know whether that is here ah, yeah it is there right the, the last one right reconstruction from internet photo collection so right so basically think of a Taj Mahal or something right. Now, it is not, it is not, it is not to say, it is not that uh, only you have to go to Taj Mahal and take those images. What, what if you have taken a few and then from the internet you download many more, right, that others have taken. Now, how do you kind of put them all together, right, because information is still there, I mean someone else took it, but that information is also information of the same thing, right, which I am looking at and maybe he took something that, uh, that I failed to take, right, and then how do you kind of merge. Right? So, so, so that way right, you can ask very, very rich, uh, rich things, right, in this and uh, that is how it sort of scales up. But, uh, but in our course, right, we will definitely do structure from motion, we will also be doing stereo, we will be doing both traditional as well as, you know, deep learning based.